So we're gonna we're gonna test the structural integrity of a Tim Hortons turkey bacon club. Yeah, turkey yeah. bacon club. Y'all ready? Let's do it. <laughs> How's that sandwich? <laughs> this is Jason Hare, our backcountry guide. The funny thing is, he's also my chiropractor. So it's a pretty crafty way of getting repeat business, isn't it? The grapes. <laughs> oh man, I think I might piss myself. Not on my feet. The road to Triple Peak is pretty rough, so Jason's Jeep came in very handy. Caden had no idea where we were going, and all I'd told him was that the hike would be pretty intense, and that's it, he was sold. So we're at the trailhead for Triple Peak, and Jason managed to get us here without losing any teeth, but I felt like I was going to lose a few there. I might have lost a little bit of my sandwich. <laughs> so we're going to hit the trailhead and uh, head on up that mountain. The trail to Triple Peak involves quite a lot of up, and the first half a kilometer is this cruel yet easy downhill section before a slippery logged river crossing. And then after that, it's just one long battle with gravity. You know, there's nothing quite like hiking up a mountain with a triathlete and a teenager to make you fully realize just how out of shape and clapped out you really are. So we're at the base of Triple Peak. That's the name of the mountain, right? Yep. And basically all the way from the bottom, the very top is just uh, an endless stream of cascading waterfalls so we'll stop and get some shots of those but what do you think about an hour to the top from here for you <laughs> are you sure it's not two hours <laughs> might be two. Oh god i do enjoy a bit of rock and rope climbing though so the next section was quite fun but having to heft my considerable carriage up these tight ravines was a bit taxing You've no doubt heard of the old cliche, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Well, the trail to Triple Peak really illustrates that point, because if all I'd come here for was to see this waterfall, it would have already been worth the journey. So we're about, what do you say, halfway up Triple Peak? Maybe about two thirds. Two thirds of the way. But it's difficult to get a fast pace because you've got all of these spectacular waterfalls on the way up. We just want to keep stopping, but we're almost there. Keep trucking and then it's sandwich time. Pink snow. Pink snow. There'll be a bit of yellow snow as well by the time we get up. <laughs> After a quick break and a few photo ops, we got back on the trail. Jason had told us to expect to see some little ice caves and we weren't disappointed. Due to a lack of common sense, I felt compelled to climb into this hole and get underneath several tons of melting ice just so that all of my 17 YouTube followers could see what it looked like. Enjoy. Just after we cleared that last section of rope, we were starting to get some lovely dappled light on the hills in the background, and these wispy slivers of cloud rolling in were the perfect backdrop to capturing a good hero shot. And that's how I pay Caden to be my cameraman. I make him look cool. And finally, we made it to the last stretch, this melting snow slope with these little splotches of pink, which are caused by the algae that forms on the ice, sometimes known as watermelon ice. All of our hard work was about to be rewarded with our first glimpses of Triple Peak in all its glory. And I think you can tell we're rather pleased. Just as soon as we reached the lake, the weather took a turn for the worst. 
the clouds of doom were rolling in, so we had to scramble and get in place to try and capture some shots before it became a complete whiteout. So what I'm doing here with this shot, whenever I take pictures like this where it's a mountain, where it's a mountain and a lake, <clears throat> I've got this reflection and that's what I want, I want a lovely reflection. And what I'll take is a shot where the polarizer isn't really doing anything so that I've got a full reflection. And then once I've taken that shot, I've got that in the bag, I'll then take another shot where I turn the polarizer so that it's cutting through the reflection and shows the details and colors underneath the water and I'll take that shot so that when I process it in Photoshop, I've got the best of both worlds. I can have as much reflection as I want or I can cut through it and blend that layer and have as much of the detail and color because I really love this blue color and that's what I want to show on the, uh, on the finished picture. So right now we're just waiting for some nice light to happen. I'm focusing on the, um, the snowpack in the distance there so that it's got a clean contrasting edge with the dark rocks. It's nice and easy to focus on that. Uh, I'm shooting at f8 and the reason why I'm getting away with f8 is because this lens, the Zeiss Batisse 18mm, is very very good at keeping uh, everything in focus from front to back. But really there's not that much in my immediate foreground. There's no there's no rocks that have any detail, so that I, I might not need to focus stack, but there is this cool little leaf under the water there, so maybe what I'll do, after I've got these shots, is I'll just focus stack that, and I'll just, uh, I'll put my polarizer back so it's reflecting, and I'll just punch in on that leaf there, and I'll focus on the leaf, get a sharp leaf, and that's easy to blend in manually in Photoshop, but it's just a leaf, you know, <clears throat> it's not that important. Really, I, I can get away with just one shot at F, F8, maybe F11, and I'll get everything in sharp focus. So, in this case, I don't really need to focus stack that badly, it's not essential. And that's when we found ourselves inside a cloud. The temperature plummeted, along with our hopes of capturing a good clear shot of Triple Peak. It was looking more and more like we'd have to come back for a second try some other time. And I really didn't want this to be one of those landscape photography fail videos. Well, we came, we saw, we shivered. It was bloody freezing. We got some decent shots, but it wasn't quite the epic light that we were hoping for. But all in all, a total success. I think so. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. Are we coming again? Oh yeah. yeah. So how are we going to get off this mountain? On your butt. On my ass. On your ass. Oh, sliding down. I'm so it took way us. Down. Well, it took us nearly two hours to get up. Ten minutes to get down. Absolutely. Jobs are yeah. good. Let's do it. Jason gracefully glides down. Beautiful. And then I just collapse like a drunken shambles. What a disgrace. Oh, and then Caden does the full ball crusher all the way down. I can't believe he could walk after that. Marvellous. Look at that useless bloody <laughs> tripod. What am I going to do with that? Right, so we're back here at Triple Peak. It's been two months. We're getting our redemption, finally. Last time we came here, we couldn't even see the, the Triple Peak. So now we can see it, we've got some gorgeous Alpen glow and there's some clouds just thinking about showing up. I reckon we're gonna have to wait until the sun's actually gone down and then the harsh Alpen glow turns into like a softer color and then the clouds will light up because that's happened so many times where I've given up, I've, I've started to walk home and then it kicks off and the, the sky lights up and you've got to run back with your camera bag on and you're all sweaty and angry, miserable experience. So just be patient and hang around. If we get that shot, we're then going to stick around for a couple of hours. We're camping here for the night anyway, so the Milky Way should pop up over the peaks there and give us a gorgeous reflection of the Milky Way. So again, fingers crossed, but I think we're going to get a way better shot than we did last time. And I really hope you like this shot because I am being eaten alive by these bastard mosquitoes. This is quite a miserable experience and this is what your life is as a landscape photographer. And if you're a landscape photographer, you'll know this. You'll know my pain. Well, we waited for the clouds to show, but they never put in an appearance. The mozzies, however, were swarming badly, so it was time to take shelter in the tent and wait for the stars to shine. And shine they did. This is a four-shot vertical panel lit by the moon rising in the east. And in this shot, my friend Catherine was kind enough to model for this 30-second moonlit exposure. 
Finally, I got that lovely morning Alpenglow shot that I was after. Nice. After shooting pretty much around the clock, all six of us were in dire need of caffeine and Caden always comes up with the goods. You've got to be pretty hardcore to carry a French press halfway up a mountain, but he did. Look at the dedication that he puts into making his rocket fuel. There's nothing quite like some caffeinated bitumen during a sunrise on a mountain. Look at that business. So I'm quite the happy camper right now, even though I've only had 20 minutes of sleep. So I do have a face like a bag of smashed crabs, but it was totally worth it. It's worth putting up with these bloody mosquitoes as well. We got a sunset, we got Milky Way, and we even got a gorgeous sunrise. So I'm so glad we came back. Totally worth it. So that's Triple Peak. I'm Gavin Hardcastle from phototripper.com. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.